Church, say amen. amen. Let's give our young people a hand. Amen. Say the word if you want to be born again. Turn with us to the book of Ephesians, chapter number six. Have your Bibles with you. Stand and look at this passage together. If you don't, you can reach in front of the pew or look together with someone sitting next to you. We'll begin in verse 10. When you found it, say amen. amen. The Holman Christian Standard Bible reads, Finally be strengthened by the Lord and by his vast strength. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the tactics of the devil. For our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the world powers of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavens. This is why you must take up the full arm of God, so you may be able to resist in the evil day, and having prepared everything to take your stand. Stand therefore with like a belt, truth like a belt around your waist, righteousness like armor on your chest, your feet sounded with the readiness for the gospel of peace. In every situation, take the shield of faith with you, and we will be able to extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. <laughs> take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is God's word. Verse number 11 says, Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the tactics of the devil. Look at your neighbor and say, Put on the whole armor of God. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. I pray that nobody came to church today naked. Amen. This church is what you need the armor of God the most. Amen. Put on the whole armor of God. Every Christian will encounter spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is the struggle against the forces of evil, which is a constant feature in the life of faith. If you are a believer of Christ Jesus, you remember the words that he said. He said, I send you out as sheep among wolves. He was not saying that the disciples were literally sheep. He did not say, mean that they would be attacked by carnivorous canines out there on their journey of making disciples. But as followers of Christ, they would sometimes be seen as prey, being attacked by the predatory and carnivorous nature of would-be followers of Christ. That means that many people guise themselves as wolves in sheep clothing. Many times the wolf is the one that is coming to take and to steal and to destroy. As the Bible says that the enemy has come to kill, steal, and destroy. And so it, it, it is a metaphor for us as followers of Christ to be prepared that we may sometimes be under attack because we are his. Scripture locates the origins of spiritual warfare in the rebellion of Satan and his angels against God and affirms the hope of God's final victory over such forces through Jesus Christ's death and resurrection. We wonder why there is so much trouble in the choirs of our church. But if you study the history of the Bible and the history of Satan, that Satan was once in the choir. And he took a third of his angels with him, and they were able to entice others with the gift of music. And so because music has a great power to influence others, Satan sometimes uses this power to influence and disrupt the good that can happen as a result of singing the songs of Zion. And so spiritual warfare is the visible struggle against invisible forces. Uh, many times because we are naive in our understanding of who Jesus really is and our understanding of what the church really is about, we have the tendency to focus on people instead of the forces that are behind the people. If you are a mature disciple, you will begin to look for principalities. You will begin to look for spiritual wickedness, which is in high places. In other words, there are 
cosmic forces at work, the same cosmic forces that were present at the moment of creation that are endowing and influencing the minds of men and women that are all around us. And just because they have on a Sunday suit and a Sunday dress, that, they, that does not mean that they cannot be influenced by the powers of the devil. That is the je devil's job. The devil's job is to create to deception and to deceive and to be a father of lies so that we will believe in things that are not real and begin to focus on things that are not of God. And so because you are a follower of Christ, that directly puts you under the attack of the enemy so that it will dilute your influence over others to also become followers of Christ. So, so even though that you cannot literally save someone's soul, when someone sees that you're struggling with spiritual warfare, it may sow a seed of doubt in the mind of that person under the power of grace and the power of salvation. It may sow a seed of wickedness in that person. They will begin to spread rumors and lies about you. It will perhaps sow a seed of distress in that person where they don't understand what their true purpose is. And so spiritual warfare is the visible struggle against invisible forces. You won't always be able to see what's behind it with the natural eye. You're only going to be able to see the source and the root cause of the evil through the study of the word of God. We must understand that we will encounter spiritual warfare at every level of the Christian journey. The preacher is not exempt from spiritual warfare. The deacon is not exempt from spiritual warfare. Your title or your office does not remove you from the attacks of the evil one because many times we are expecting specific attacks from specific people, but what the enemy can do is bring in a stranger to raise hell all around you. What he can do is bring and somebody that we're not even expecting to catch us off guard. And that's why you have to be prayed up. That's why you have to be on your knees more than you are on the phone. Because some of us got it backwards. We're on the phone more than we are on our knees. Getting advice from people who are not prepared to handle the devil on another level. See, I knew the devil when I was out there with the devil. And I knew that I was working with him. So therefore, he didn't have to worry about keeping me in his company but now that I'm on the Lord's side I have to be prayed up because he may not always come with a short skirt and high heel shoes he may come in a way that I least expect this is why Jesus and Paul encouraged us to remain in prayer. Jesus said man ought always pray and not faint. Paul said to pray without ceasing and most of us if we are casual in our prayer life we are reactive in prayer instead of proactive in prayer. Being reactive in prayer is praying when a problem comes up in our lives that we seem to not be able to solve but being proactive is laying everything at the feet of Jesus and trusting him with our future because we know our past is all behind us. Whatever I did on yesterday ain't nothing I can do about yesterday because yesterday is gone and tomorrow may never be mine. So as long as the blood is running warm in my veins, I ought to stay on my knees and give everything to Jesus. God wants us as a church to be fully prepared to face spiritual warfare. The concept of spiritual warfare automatically lets us know that we're going to be in a fight. It automatically lets us know that we're going to be engaged in battle. There is a winning side and a losing side. There are weapons involved and there's a battlefield. But this metaphorical battlefield is not always going to be fought with physical swords and shields and arrows. But they will be attacks of the enemy and our consciousness and our way of thinking to keep our minds off of following Christ and doing the will of the enemy. In order to win the battles against the forces of evil, we must understand the battle plans of the enemy. That's why we have to understand that we're not dealing with a mom and pop grocery store devil. The devil has a hierarchy. The devil has an army. The devil has an army and a hierarchy with battle plans and schemes and tactics that are already planned out against the body of Christ. So if the devil has a hierarchy and structure 
structure and order. He has a battle plan with schemes and a target audience. That means that the church must understand that we will be under attack. But not only understand that we will be under attack, we need to understand how we're going to be attacked so that we will have a counterattack. And that's what we're setting up for the message today, that you understand that the whole armor of God is that counterattack. The whole armor of God is what prepares you to face the invisible forces of evil that we will struggle with visibly. We must understand the battle plans of the enemy. The church must use prayer as an offensive and defensive weapon. Paul wrote the letter to the Ephesians in order to encourage the church to live out spiritual truth. The Christian life is a warfare, a struggle not only with common calamities and inner desires, but with opposing forces of the powers of darkness which seek to destroy the testimony of the believer. That's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to take the authority away from your testimony. He wants to take the muscle out of your swing. He wants to take away the very thing that God brought you out of and he wants to convince others and perhaps you that God wasn't the one that brought you out and so he wants to slow down your passion from sharing the testimony that if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side where would we be it is therefore a requisite that the Christian soldier be stout-hearted and well-armed with spiritual weapons which God supplies. That's the good news about the armor of God, is that the armor of God comes from God. The sword of the Spirit and the access of prayer are weapons against which Satan is powerless. So therefore we all need to make sure that we get dressed, not when we come to church, but before we come to church. Touch your neighbor and say, put on the whole arm of God. Somebody wants to know, how do we prepare for spiritual warfare? How do we fight an enemy that we cannot see? And perhaps for some of us, how do we fight an enemy that we like? Amen. Many of us are not willing to fight people that we like, even when they're wrong. We want people to be in our corner because we like them. But what God wants us to see is take away your eye on the person and be aware of the principality that's behind the person. Many people have heard the saying with friends like that, who needs enemies? That's why we have to stay on our knees because somebody who is not prayed up really can't be your friend because what they're going to try to do is influence you to do what they think is right instead of what God says is right. Three lessons and we will take our seat. The first lesson is, is you have to get stronger in the word. Touch your neighbor and say, get stronger in the word. Verse 10 says, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. That word strong is in dunamo, which means to grow strong. It means to increase in strength. It means to add strength. See, that's the problem with some of us super saints. We think that because we've been in church for 30 years, that we don't need to pray no more. That we don't need to learn some more word. That we don't need to add to what God has already done. But when you come to the house of God with the mindset of the importance of getting stronger because there's some devils that are on our case that we can't shake just with a now and I lay me down to sleep prayer or I pray the Lord my soul to keep prayer. You got to get to the next level in God because you're dealing with a new devil. This is a devil you've never seen before and the devil comes in sheep's clothing. Many of us are looking for something in a particular package but it takes the next level of the word and the next level of prayer to help us to get stronger. That's what the word endow means. When you are endowed with the power of the word of God, you are equipped to fight the enemy with the word of God. So when the enemy comes in and tries to persuade you to be subtle in your sin, to creep your way through the back door instead of bursting your way in through the front door, touch a neighbor and say you're still sin. It doesn't matter how you go in, whether you go in the front, the side, or the back, if you're doing something that's not in the will of God, you are being deceived by the enemy. 
the church was a follower of Christ, but they were following Christ, uh, wounded and stumbled, vulnerable, uh, and sometimes wicked. Uh, and it was confusing those uh, who did not yet know Jesus in the free pardon of their sins. Uh, and so perhaps uh, we need to reevaluate uh, our understanding of what church is really all about. Uh, it's not about being in the place uh, where the people gather. It's about being in the presence of God uh, and where his spirit dwells. So in other words, when you're ready for that next level of God you will learn how to have church before you get to church because I gotta be prayed up before I get here on Sunday because it's all kind of devilment on people's minds and people don't think you can see it but when you're prayed up you can see it you can see it when people want to have a shade tree meeting you can see it when people who got some opinions without reading the Bible you can see it when people have not prayed with you on Friday but I want to talk to you on Sunday. You want to learn how to see spiritual warfare. And you see it through the word of God. You get stronger in the word. Then secondly, you'll be ready to go shopping for new clothes. Touch your neighbor and say, go shopping for new clothes. In other words, we know a few folk around us who tend to be a bit extravagant when uh, it's time to go shopping. They're waiting uh, for that rapid refund check from their income taxes so they can go over uh, to the mall or perhaps uh, their favorite haberdashery or their favorite tailor and begin to rack up on all types of garments. But the shopping that I'm speaking about is not on the physical clothes that we wear. Uh, the shopping that I'm talking about uh, is the spiritual weapons that we're going to need in order to deal with the powers of the enemy. Paul said, put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the tactics of the devil. That word put on still comes from the word in now. It's in duo, to clove. It literally means to sink into. It means to get dressed. And what the procedure was for a soldier in the Roman army, and Paul is using combat metaphors because this was something that the church could visibly understand. When a soldier would fight in the Roman legion, before he went out onto the battlefield, he would have to put on his armor piece by piece. And before he would get out into the line or the legion or the cohort that where he was fighting, he had to have his commanding officer inspect his armor to make sure that he was well equipped for battle. And see, some of us ain't passed inspection. We ain't went by the spiritual leadership that we have had placed over us to ask them, are we ready for battle? Because some of us got a helmet on and we know that we're saved, but our breastplate of righteousness is not on, so that our vulnerable organs are open to the attacks of the enemy. The purpose of the breastplate, y'all, was to protect the heart, and many of us are still wearing our feelings on our shirt sleeve. And if you ain't got on the breastplate of righteousness, you will listen to folk opinions more than you listen to what God has to say. And then when you don't do what people want you to do, your feelings will be hurt, and your heart will be broken. But you can please man some of the time. But when you try to please man all of the time, you end up failing God all of the time. And that's why we got to have it on. The breastplate of righteousness. The helmet of salvation. The feet shod with the gospel of peace. Paul is using these combat metaphors to let us know that each level of discipleship requires a level of preparation that is necessary not only for us to compete in battle, but also for us to win the battle. Because some battles that I fought as a member of the army of God, I didn't think I was winning because of what was going on with the enemy at the time. I was in situations where I might have had on my breastplate and I might have had on my helmet but I didn't have the shield of faith and the shield of faith is there for the flaming darts that come from the evil one this is when people will talk about you and say things to you that are fiery darts that catch you off guard you see it's one thing to fight in hand to hand combat but it's another thing to have missiles fired at you while you're on the battlefield and while 
while we're on the battlefield for the Lord, we don't need to be worried about arrows coming at us from every kind of direction. We need to be focused on the enemy that's in front of us. But many times while there's an enemy on the front of us, there are arrows coming at us from every side. And that's when you got to be able to rely on your brother and sister who have also their armor to have your back. You got to have the helmet of salvation. But most importantly, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The church needs to go shopping for new clothes, not to say that there's something wrong with the physical wardrobe in which we have on on Sunday, but there's something wrong with the lacking of a spiritual wardrobe in which we face the wiles of the devil, the schemes, the tactics, the battle plans. The devil is fighting an air attack, a ground attack, and a sea attack. He's coming at us from every direction, but it does not mean that he will always be guaranteed the victory because we cannot enter the battlefield always unprepared. Get stronger in the word. Go shopping for new clothes. The third and lastly, gain self-control through the gospel. Paul takes us from verses 14 through 17 to verses 18 through 20 where he was using the combat metaphors to really set up for his own situation. And in his situation, he was locked up in jail. In verse 18, he says, With every prayer and request, pray all times in the Spirit and stay alert in this with all perseverance and intercession for all the saints. Pray also for me that the message may be given to me when I open my mouth to make known the boldness of the mystery of the gospel. The word that he used is also proclaim, which also means to bring information, to inform or to make known. And whether we realize it or not, the word of God, the preached word of God is to inform us for our destination and not just for our situation. Whether you believe it or not, there are folk who are struggling ten times worse than you who got five times more joy than you got right now. So what we do too often is we let the devil steal our joy. And that's one of the signs of you knowing who's really praying. Because when you want to know who's really praying, let somebody say something new out of the way. Let somebody catch you off guard with an off-candid comment. You got to have some self-control. You got to be able to gain some self-control and say, wait a minute. This person ain't the devil. It's the devil that's behind the person that's trying to confuse me from what God wants me to be. And in order for you to go to what God wants you to be, you got to go through some of them devils. And I'm a fan of sports, particularly football and basketball. And I love the running back position in football because the running back cannot always rely on that quick move to the outside in order to make the first down. Sometimes the running back has to drop his shoulder and drop his head and run over that linebacker in order to get to the finish line. I'm trying to go somewhere with somebody because somebody here is just praying that same now I lay me down to sleep prayer that grandma taught them when they were five years old and they're trying to take that same level of prayer to deal with a six foot eight devil and what I'm trying to tell you is is that if you don't have some self control about yourself the devil's going to be laughing at you all the way to the welfare line because ain't no little bitty prayer gonna fix a really big problem. You got to get before the throne of grace and be in prayer for spiritual warfare because you know that the devil's not just attacking you. He's attacking others who are just like you. People who are vulnerable and weak and always needing encouragement just to get out of the bed on Sunday morning in order to be able to put on their clothes and get to church and deal uh, with mean and vicious church folk uh, who sometimes ain't even praying themselves. Uh, and when we have the whole arm of God, uh, we're understanding it's not about the people. Uh, it's about the principalities that are behind the people. Uh, and this is what Paul is trying to tell us. Uh, is that the danger on the battlefield uh, is often that we do not take the enemy seriously. Uh, and we therefore fail to put on the armor. Uh, if you don't know, now you know. Uh, the devil ain't playing 
playing with you. He's after you for a reason. And the reason he's after you is not just because of who you are. It's because of who you're following and who's following you. It's called the chain of command. And no matter what situation I'm in, all I'm ever going to be is a follower of Jesus. And as long as I'm following Jesus, that means where I'm going, others are going to see him before they see me. And the others that are behind me, that's the reason they're behind me. Because God wants me to leave them in my past. I'm trying to tell somebody that it's by faith that you got to put on the whole arm of God. you got to also pray, which must be done at the beginning of the day. So if you don't know, now you know. you got to have that song in your heart that says this morning when I rose, I didn't have no doubt because I know the Lord, he will take care of me. He will provide for me. He'll lead me and guide me all the way. So when I get into a situation and the devil shows his ugly face, if I prayed about it before the situation, I know that he ain't brought me thus far to leave me in the presence of a devil. We must never underestimate the strategies and the strength of the devil. He's going to try you. He's going to push your buttons. He's going to come with darts. He's going to come with arrows. He's going to come with weapons that are carnal. That means the flesh. But don't get caught in the flesh. you got to be prayed of so that you can have on the whole arm of God. i got to get out of here. There's one more thing that I got to tell you. There was a situation that one day, a woman, she bought a very expensive dress. A middle lady, she liked to dress in the finest of garments. And one day she brought home a very expensive dress. And her husband had asked her, honey, how much did you spend on that dress? And she told him how much she spent. And he said, why in the world would you spend that much money on a dress? When you know we can't afford it The wife smiled at her husband She said, but honey You don't understand The devil made me do it I tried And when I tried to put it back The devil said, you look awesome In that dress That dress is all you, girlfriend It's all over you You got to get that dress And the husband said, then why Didn't you tell the devil To get me my behind me, Satan. And the wife said, I did. Tell the devil to get me behind me. And he got behind me. And he said, the dress looked good from behind you. And all I'm trying to tell us is some of us can't shake the devil because we like him being behind us. Because when he's behind us, he tells us what we want to hear. Is there anybody here that can testify that he got from in front of us but he's still behind us whispering in our ear telling us what we want to hear that's why you gotta have on the whole armor of God because if you don't you have itching ears waiting to hear what you want to hear but you gotta say devil get out of my way because the Bible says resist the devil and he'll flee from us some of us can't resist him because we want to be just like him but I ain't trying to be no devil because when you act like a devil you get a devil's reward which is a place called hell and I ain't going to hell for no church folk because God has been good to me somebody ought to be shouting because ain't no devil gonna make me this my blessing I'm pressing on the upward way New heights I'm gaining each and every day A higher plane that I have found Lord, I say Lord, plant my feet on higher ground Is there anybody here that got on the helmet of salvation? The breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth 
the feet shot with the gospel of peace. But most of all, it's the sword that's going to help you fight the enemy. The sword is the word of God. If you know his word, will you say yeah? Say yeah. Say yeah. Whole armor of God. 